Hello everybody, my name is Aspen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are here to start off a week of mood reading. To kick everything off, I figured I would let you know what's going on and what I'm currently in the middle of reading wise. So I just got back from my trip to Texas and it was amazing, incredible. I had so much fun and it was very sad to come home, but I got home yesterday and today I've just been doing a lot of cleaning and like resetting type things. I had a lot of laundry to do, I had to unpack. I haven't been grocery shopping in almost two months, so I went grocery shopping this morning and then I've just been working on doing some organizing. When I first moved into this place a couple months ago, I had like some of my spare closets, I just started throwing things in there that I didn't wanna deal with. And it's overwhelming to me to have that going on. So I wanted to go through like those closets and clean up whatever. So I've been doing a lot of things today. And while I've been doing that, I started a new audiobook this morning, and I think I'm already like 70% of the way through it. And that is Sand by Hugh Howey. So I read his entire Silo series. I read the first book in June, and then I finished the series at the beginning of this month. So you'll get to see my full thoughts about it probably pretty soon, relatively soon when my wrap up comes out. After reading that, I really wanted to read more of his work. And I think the next series that he wrote after Silo was this Sand series. It's a duology from what I can tell. But like I said, the first one is called Sand. We're following another sort of post-apocalyptic world. But in this world, the entire continent has been covered by sand and all of the old cities and everything is buried way underground. So everybody lives in these encampments, in these tents, and it's kind of just like living in the desert. And there are people who are divers, like their job or what they do is they have these suits that help them to dive down in the sand and try to collect relics and things from the old society and they bring those up and they trade them for money and goods and that's kind of how the like society goes round. At the center of our story we are following four siblings who are all in different spots with different things going on but basically the basis of it is that the society as a whole has been trying to find this one specific city for many, many years. And each of these siblings in one way or another ends up being wrapped up in this little adventure and what's going on. And I'm really enjoying it so far. I loved getting the backstory on this society. It felt like it was a little bit harder to paint that picture right away when I started the book, but that could just be because I was doing strictly audio and it's always a little bit harder to, I feel like, for my brain to catch up when I'm just on audio. But I've eventually gotten there and I feel like I understand how things work for the most part. Like I said, I'm at 70%, so like there's still a decent amount of story left. It feels similar to the Wool or Silo series to me in the sense that like this first book, I feel like I... I can't believe I'm already 70%. Like with what I've listened to, it has gone by so fast. There is so much going on. And with this one, like we're flipping perspectives more than we did in the other series. So in this one, I'm actually getting the perspective of each of the siblings, which adds another element to just keeping your interest up all the time because you're kind of leaving off with one sibling and where they're at. And then, you know, you want to keep reading because you want to get back to their story. But in between in the other chapters, you're still getting sucked into what's happening with those siblings where they're at. So I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, I'm super intrigued to see where the rest of this book is going to go. I put the audio for the second book on hold, so hopefully that will come in at least kind of soon. I don't know when that will come in, but that's what I've been listening to on audio, and I'm kind of hoping I'll be able to finish it today if I have a few other things to just like run around and do this afternoon that I can just finish that one up which would be awesome and then the other book that i'm reading kind of it's like my physical slash kindle read because i'm reading it on my kindle but i have the physical copy is a certain hunger this was on my tbr for july it's the last book for my july tbr that i need to get through i am making slow progress on this one i'm only on chapter six which is 63 pages into the book 
This is following this woman who is a serial killer and she's basically just recounting her life to us right now. Really all we know about her is that she's killed a handful of people and she's a food critic. And that's kind of where we're at. I'm having a hard time getting through this one. It is very dense and it's, the writing is so flowery and so over the top in a way that is not my preference to read. So I'm kind of struggling with the writing style of this, with the denseness of it, with the length of the chapters. And I just don't really know where it's going. Like it just feels like this recounting of a life, but I don't know why I'm supposed to care about this life yet or like what is super interesting aside from her being a serial killer. I got a little bit nervous because I had been looking at a couple of reviews and I was seeing pretty consistently people saying like, oh, the first half was so great and so fast paced and kept me on the edge of my seat and then the second half got boring. And I was like, okay, so what does it mean if I'm already bored and I'm only 60 pages in? Those are what we are working on at the moment. And like I said, we're just gonna do a little, probably like week-ish of mood reading, see what we get into. I have a lot of library holds that I had accepted when I was going on my trip thinking I was going to read way more than I did and I don't know why I thought I was going to read way more than I did because I feel like it should have been obvious to me that we were we were going to be chatting and not reading. But regardless, I have all the holds and I don't really want to let them expire and so I'm trying to get through a bunch of those in the next couple of days and then see what else we get into. I have a few things on my radar, a few things I'm really excited for. So I will let you know when I have more reading updates. Good morning. So it's obviously the next day and I have a couple of updates. First of all, I did finish Sand yesterday and I landed on a 3.5 for that one. I really enjoyed it. I again thought the story was very unique, which the same can be said for the Silo series. I didn't love the world building quite as much. I felt like this one could have used a little bit more in-depth explanation of things. It just kind of seems like that's his style to just throw you in and you just kind of have to hope you can like float to the top and figure out what's going on because he doesn't spend a lot of time just info dumping on you, which I appreciate, but then sometimes it takes a while to really get fully immersed in the world when you're not quite sure. And then it kind of felt like I was probably missing things in the beginning because I wasn't fully understanding what was happening yet. So I would have liked a little bit more explanation, but I did think that the world itself was fun to read about. I'm definitely intrigued by where the second book will go, the way the first one ended. It honestly felt a little bit strained. Whole buildup of the whole book was very high energy, very fast paced. And then we got to like what was gonna end or what was gonna happen at the end. And it felt a little bit anticlimactic, but then there was one final thing right at the very end that we know will probably change things for the second book. So I am very interested to see where that goes. I have the audiobook on hold, so hopefully that will come in relatively soon. I don't remember how long the library said that was gonna take, but I enjoyed that one. Then I started The Romantic Agenda by Claire Kahn. I've had this rom-com on hold on Libby for a long time, and I've been really excited to read it. I think I've heard mostly good things. We are following this 30-year-old woman. She works as a manager slash executive assistant for her friend's company, and her and her friend, they do a lot of traveling together. They're very enmeshed with each other, and she is in love with him, but he does not seem to be 
reciprocating those feelings because even though they travel all the time together and they're like together 24 7 she finds out that he has this new girl that he's been talking to and he wants to ask this girl to be his girlfriend so he plans this whole big trip with all of her favorite things but he still invites our main character to go with him because this girl that he's been talking to really wants to meet her so she kind of gets forced into going or like coerced into going on this trip with her best friend and the girl that he's currently dating and also a part of it is that the girl that this guy's dating, her name is Summer. She wanted to bring a friend with us, so she brought this guy named Fox. And this guy does not like Fox. I think his name is Malcolm, does not like Fox. And so he asked Joy, our main character, to come with basically just to like entertain Fox because he doesn't want him around. She's kind of being dragged along against her will a little bit and like she's kind of trying to figure out if she can make her friend see the feelings that she has for him and it just seems like it's probably gonna get a little messy but I only got like 10-ish percent in last night. I didn't get too far so I'm excited to read more of that later. For today, I really want to start an audiobook while I'm working and I have one Stephen King audiobook from the library right now, but I really do not want to read it at the moment because I just always have a bunch of his audiobooks on hold on Libby because they all have really long wait times and I want to read all of his books, but I'm not in any particular hurry to do so. So I just throw a bunch on hold and when they come in, I read them. I think every single book I had on hold at the start of this month came in at some point and I listened to three of them in a row before I finally deferred the next two. A sixth one in one month came in a few days ago and I just accepted it because I have three weeks so I was like I can get to that a little bit later I do not want to listen to it right now so I was just looking at my shelves and kind of looking on Libby and Hoopla to see what was available and I think the audiobook I'm going to start while I work today is actually going to be He Started It by Samantha Downing this was Haley's book and she let me steal it from her well I didn't steal it she did let me have it because she was wanting to get rid of it anyways and this is the only Samantha Downing book that I have not read yet and I know that it's like not her most well-loved but I really want to have read all of her books and just be completely caught up because I've enjoyed everything that I've read from her so far and I know she has at least one book that most people don't really didn't really love and I liked it. I enjoyed it. So maybe I'll like this one too. And then I will just know that I have read all of her books. I'm fully caught up for the next one. And I don't know a ton about this one other than that I think it follows a family who has to take a road trip. Um, I think like a relative dies and they have to all go to where they that relative was. The audiobook was available on Libby. So I'm going to start that. I'll probably honestly finish it throughout the day while I'm working because the audio is only 10 hours long. And I'm at minimum a two times speed girly. So so we're definitely going to get through this today, but I will try to update you when I'm about halfway with how I'm feeling about it. So I will see you in a couple hours. Hello. It is a few hours later. I just finished up my lunch and while I was eating, I continued to listen to the audiobook for He Started It and I just got to part two, which is pretty much exactly 50% of the way through the book. And to give you a little bit more information on the plot, since I myself did not really know when I started, we are following three siblings as they are on this cross-country road trip with their grandfather's ashes in the backseat. So their grandfather has passed away and in his will, he has left his all of his assets, his entire estate has been left to these three grandkids, but the stipulation is that they need to recreate this road trip that they took as children with him. And then when they get to the end of the road trip, they have to scatter his ashes and then they will get the inheritance that he has left for them. So we're following these siblings who obviously do not spend a lot of time together. They are not very close as they are recreating this road trip. And it's kind of like a road trip of very macabre things. Like they keep stopping at all these very dark, kind of disturbing places like these museums. They're at the Bonnie and Clyde Museum. There's just a lot of different stops that they take that have this like darker theme to them. 
and they have some of the siblings have their spouses with and they're like what was your grandfather's deal like this is kind of crazy he was taking you as children to all these places but we are kind of flashing back and forth learning about what's happening present day obviously as they are trying to get to the end of this road trip but also learning about the road trip that they took when they were children because it's not as like wholesome and sweet as oh grandpa took the kids on a road trip like it's not really given those vibes so we're learning a lot more about who their grandfather was, what they knew as kids, what was going on, all of that stuff. And then present day, we are also getting just, you know, a lot of the typical teases to things that we as the reader don't know yet. Lots of secrets being revealed, lots of family drama going on. And I'm finding it very entertaining so far. I think it's kind of this scenario where every sibling has something to hide. I just can't quite puzzle out what I think happened or where I think this is going. Like, we've learned a few big pieces of information that definitely change the trajectory of the story and definitely add a lot of elements that could get very interesting, but I don't know how it's all going to piece together yet, and I feel like I just want to let it come to me. I don't want to try to think too hard about it, but I'm enjoying the experience so far. It's reading very quickly. It feels very fast-paced. I think it could get to feel really repetitive with them just like continuously like driving to the next place and having a stop, but flashing back and forth to tell us about the things that happened when they took the original road trip as kids is kind of keeping that level of interest there where things could get slowed down a little bit. You have that to kind of fall back on to keep things going. So far, I'm thoroughly entertained. I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait to see where it goes. So I'm going to continue to listen throughout the rest of the workday and I should definitely be able to finish it up. I think the audiobook says four hours left and I'm listening on maybe 2.5. Yeah, I'm on 2.5. The narration felt a little bit slower when I started this one out, so I'm definitely going to get through this in the next couple of hours, so I will let you know my final thoughts when I finish. Okay, it is another few hours later, and I have finished. He started it. I think I'm going to land on a 3.5 for this. I enjoyed it. I thought that the storyline was very entertaining. I never really knew where it was going. And to me, it was very fast paced. I was able to get through very quickly without getting bored. There wasn't really anything about the general plot that I disliked. So I originally thought I was going to give it four stars, but the end gets a little whiplashy. Like literally the last 10 pages is twist upon twist upon twist upon twist upon twist. And it was like, oh my god, slow down for a second. And I thought that that was a little bit excessive. When it comes to the very, very end of the book, something insane happened three pages before the end of the book, and I was like, what the hell? Th there's only three pages left. How are we going to resolve this? And then I got to the actual ending, and that ending was definitely a choice, but... I don't hate it, and I feel like a lot of people maybe would. I'm not sure the general consensus about this book. I feel like I've seen kind of mixed reviews, but not really like that this is the favorite of Samantha Downing's books, and it's not my favorite either, but I feel like that ending could have a lot to do with people who don't like it. It was a very unique choice, but again, I don't hate it. I did not hate the decision. It kind of shocked me in the moment, but I've been sitting on it for a little while and I'm not mad about it. So I think I'm going to sit with a 3.5. I'm happy with that, honestly. Like, I enjoyed this more than I expected to going in, again, just because of, like, the mixed reviews that I've seen, but I'm definitely glad that I've read it and I've now completed Samantha Downing's entire backlist, which I think is really fun and I'm excited. I don't know when her next book will come out, if anything's been announced if she has another one in the works, but whenever it does, I'll be here because I've had two 3.5s and two 4 stars. So I have enjoyed everything I've read from her, which I think is awesome. And yeah, that is the end of this one. As far as the rest of the evening goes, I don't really know how much more I'll read. I have some plans for in a little bit here, but maybe when I get home, I'll try to make some progress on a certain hunger. I honestly really do not want to read that book. That book is making me not want to read, which is why I've been reading like three books at a time for the last couple of days. So I will let you know when I either have updates about a certain hunger or when I start a new book. I'm not sure, but I'll let you know when something happens.
Hello. It is the next day and I have a few like small reading updates, I think. So last night I tried to make a little bit more progress on A Certain Hunger. I think I read like one more chapter and we're gonna call this a DNF. I just don't care. The writing style is not for me at all. I do not enjoy the way this book is written in any way. It's just too much for me. The way I would describe it is like excessive. The language that's being used feels excessive and it feels unnecessarily complex. This probably makes me sound like an idiot, but I don't really care. I just don't prefer to read books that way. It feels exhausting. I would really just rather you get to the point and tell me what I need to know. I, do, I don't understand why I'm supposed to care about this character. I don't care. That is the basis of why I'm DNFing. I literally could not care Care less about what's happening or where it's gonna go. So I'm just not gonna finish it because I would probably give it like a one star and that's pointless. Why, why put myself through that? If I could find it on audio, I would maybe try the audio, but the only, I think the only audio is on Audible and I do not have Audible and I am not about to drop $25 on an audiobook. So that is the end of A Certain Hunger and honestly I feel relief. That was that one. Then I tried to read a little bit more of The Romantic Agenda. I think I read another like 10% of that book and I'm liking it but I just was not in the mood. I don't know why. I just it wasn't working in the moment. It's not a bad book and I'm definitely gonna finish it. I just wasn't in the mood for it last night when I was trying to fall asleep. So I only read a couple more chapters of that and then I decided to start another book. I started Phantom Limb by Lucinda Berry because that is the book club pick for Haley's book club this month and that one was already a lot. I think I got like 20 something percent. I got to exactly 20 percent. I'm on chapter five. It starts out we are following these two twin sisters who are adults now but we flash back right away to when they were children. They were in a very abusive home. Their mother was very neglectful towards them and we find out like they were rescued and adopted and now they're adults and one of the sisters kind of is doing okay. She's going to college. She has a job. She's like financial actually supporting herself and her sister, but the other sister is not okay. She does not do anything. She sits at home. She's very depressed. She has a lot of lasting mental health effects from their childhood and everything that they went through. So that's where we're at right now. We're kind of just seeing how our main character that we're reading from, she's the sister who's like kind of okay, I guess, and we're just seeing her struggle with how she lives her life and how she is true to herself while also trying to take care of her sister. She's really feeling like if she is happy or if she is successful or if she is okay, that she is kind of doing a disservice to her sister or she's leaving her behind and she doesn't know how her sister will react to it. They're very, very codependent on each other. That's kind of what we're seeing so far. I will say this is right out of the gate, extremely dark. There are many, many triggers. So if you plan to read it, definitely look into that. I had a moment for a second where I had to stop and think to myself, like, can I actually read this book because of one specific scene? Luckily, it kind of wrapped up pretty fast. It was only a couple paragraphs and it was over, which is good that it was over, but I'm definitely gonna, like, kind of keep tabs with myself on how I'm feeling because there are things in here that are not necessarily super significant triggers for me, but they definitely make me feel a little uneasy. I'm gonna have to kind of keep an eye on myself and how I'm feeling, but I do want to read this obviously for the book club and I really enjoy Lucinda Berry's books. I've enjoyed all but one of her books that I've read and I've been wanting to kind of keep working on her backlist, so I was excited that this one got picked for the book club. But yeah, definitely heavy, heavy, heavy book. As for today, I was wanting to listen to a thriller just because those are the easiest for me to read on audio. I'm gonna try to find thriller on my shelves, but my backup plan, if I cannot find a thriller with an audiobook available, is the Stephen King audiobook that I have from the library right now, which is Insomnia. That'll be like the last resort if I can't find something else to listen to today. So I'm gonna look around on my shelves, see what I can find, and I will let you know when I'm reading something else. 
Hello. It is a few hours. Well, actually, it's a lot of hours later. I guess I didn't update you at lunchtime like I thought I did. It's kind of a bit later and I have some updates because it took me a while to find an audiobook for today. I do not know what was going on. The the hold lines were long. Nothing I was looking for was on Hoopla. I was having a rough go finding an audiobook that wasn't the Stephen King one that I already have that I don't feel like listening to right now. But I finally found one and that was Drowning by TJ Newman. So I started this and I am now, I just got to chapter 20, page 151, which is actually a little over halfway. TJ Newman's books are not very long. They're usually like under 300 pages, which is great. I just got to the halfway-ish point, so I wanted to let you guys know what I was thinking. And this is the second book from this author. She writes, I think, strictly airplane thrillers. And so I've read her first book, Falling. I did not love that one. Some of the messages or like just the plot points in that book made me a little uncomfortable. I wasn't a huge fan, but I did want to give her a second chance. And so now I'm reading Drowning. And in this one, we are following a flight where within the first couple of minutes of the flight, all of the engines catch fire and explode and the plane goes down and they are taking flight from Hawaii. So they are just over ocean and they end up having to land the plane in the ocean. Right away, a bunch of people start fleeing the aircraft and there's someone on the plane who says like, no, we need to stay in the plane. If you leave the plane, you will die. There are going to be winds. Everything is going to catch on fire. And so a group of them end up staying in the plane and the plane is actually sinking down into the ocean. And so we are following from inside the plane, we have the perspectives of the people that are trapped on board. And then we are also following outside of the plane, the perspectives of the people that are running the rescue mission, trying to get to the passengers that are still on board the plane, the people who are stranded in the ocean. It's just a lot going on. And I am much preferring the general storyline of this. I like the idea of just this like, it's not a natural disaster, but like the plane caught fire, we don't know what happened, and now we're just trying to rescue people who are stuck. It is the, one of those books where you literally feel like you can't breathe the entire time because you just have no idea what's going to happen. Reading this is reminding me a lot of if anybody's watched the movie, is it called 13 Lives? Yeah, the movie 13 Lives, which is a movie based off the true story of the rescue of the soccer team in Thailand who got stuck in a cave system and like it was flooded and they had to have the divers come through. That's an incredible movie. There's also a documentary about it. That movie, I've watched that movie multiple times and I still have to pace around the apartment every time I watch it, even though I know everything that happens. It is such a suffocating feeling to be trapped that way. And that's how I feel while I'm reading this book or while I'm listening to the audio. You just don't know how they're gonna get them out and knowing like it's gonna have to be this extreme risk that they have to take to get the people out of here. So I am really, really enjoying this so far. I'm, I'm completely invested. I can't wait to keep reading and I'm, re I'm really happy with that. Like I said, I just, I didn't love the author's first book, but it was very situational to the plot of that book. And, you know, the idea of an airplane thriller, in theory, I love it because it's something that's definitely scary. It's definitely a very real fear that a lot of people have. It's something you can, if you've ever flown in your life, you can relate to the fears of things like this happening. And so I feel like it would make such a good thrilling read. But at the same time, it's a little terrifying because it's a little too close to reality. Thrillers like this can work really well. It's just going to depend on your preference for how the story is told or like what the crisis is that is taking place. And in this situation, I much prefer the storyline of this one than her other, her first book. And I actually think... She has a third one coming out relatively soon because I just saw an ARC review. I don't know if it was on Instagram or what, but I saw someone reviewing an ARC. So if I do end up enjoying this one after everything's said and done, I will probably still continue to give her chances and read new books. It was just that first one, hopefully, that I didn't love. It's a lot. There is a lot happening and I am fully invested and am literally going to turn this off, get back to reading and hopefully finish it. My mom's coming for dinner and I have to cook and I don't know if I'll be able to finish it before she gets here. So I'm going to shut up 
and get back to listening and reading because I really don't think I can be left on a cliffhanger of like 30 or 40 pages left. I think that would kill me. So that's where we're at as far as the reading for today. This is what we've picked up. It's going very well and I will let you know when I have final thoughts about it. I'm a little bit farther in and they just mentioned the soccer team and the caves in Thailand that I was just talking about. That's crazy. is being blown right now I do not I feel like I know what's going on but I don't know if I'm right and th if that is what's going on that's crazy hello it is the next day and I have a few reading updates for you I'll start with the book I finished yesterday which was drowning I was able to finish this as I was like making dinner last night I ended up giving this four stars I really enjoyed this one up until the very very end I was feeling high high levels of anxiety it really doesn't let you breathe until like the last page which I thought was really well done. It's such a specific feeling that you get. And honestly, I didn't feel that same level of anxiety in the first book that I read from this author. I just, I was not as attached to that story, but this one just felt so different to me. And in a very good way, thankfully, I really enjoyed it. And I'm definitely interested in trying another one of her books just to see if you know, it was just a one-off with the first one that I didn't love, but I thought this was like edge of your seat, couldn't breathe, didn't know what was going to happen at all times, literally until the last page. I just thought this was super well done. So I gave this four stars. I obviously listened to it like basically in one sitting. I read it. I'm super happy to have read this because I was kind of putting it off based off my feelings from the author's first book. I was hesitant to try this one, but I'm glad that I finally read it because... I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend Drowning. So that is one more book finished. And then I have been making some progress on Phantom Limb. So I was actually reading it a little bit this morning. I was painting my nails and I actually recorded a little clip, but I just got to chapter 11, which is 47% of the way into the book. So we're going to call it halfway. We're going to round up and some things have just been revealed that I feel like drastically changed the trajectory of this story, and I think that I know where it's going, but if that is where it's going, it's crazy, and I am so curious to see what she's gonna do with the story now. I did not see that coming whatsoever. When the pieces clicked together in my brain, I had a gasp moment. I thought that she built up to it really well and like in a way that now has me questioning everything that I've been reading so far. So it definitely turned things around a little bit because before getting to that, it was a little bit hard to read. Like I was saying in my first update, like this is a hard book. It is heavy content, heavy subject matter, just overall depressing to read. Where our character was at through kind of from where I last updated to now, she's in a place that I don't think many people probably have good experiences with or just what people know about it is generally not super positive information. So you're just kind of reading with this feeling of dread of like, oh my gosh, what is gonna happen? It was getting a little bit much where I was just like, okay, is the whole book taking place here? Like we get to this point, you know, whatever, 20-ish percent in, and I don't know if I can read 80 more percent. So I was just trying to figure out where the author was gonna take the story like if we were just gonna be sitting there like what I knew something was gonna have to happen I knew we couldn't just be like sitting in that situation this whole time but I did not see what actually happened 
coming. So now I'm just itching to like finish it. I really, really want to get through it. I actually am leaving for the weekend. I'm going to visit some family and so I have to work and then I have to drive to my family's place. And so I don't know that I can just sit and read. And I'm so annoyed because I don't know if it's just this this one particular book from Lucinda Berry or I didn't look because a lot of her books because they're on Kindle Unlimited a lot of them automatically come with the audio version as part of KU like the audio is also on KU but this one you still have to pay for it granted it's like three dollars but I hate paying for audiobooks when I already own a physical copy or I've got it from KU which like I pay for KU KU is not free I hate having to pay for the audio and I will do anything I can to avoid it, but I think all of Lucinda's books are only on Audible. I've never seen her books on like Libby or Hoopla or anything. Oh, I take that back. I literally just looked at Libby and all of the audio, just the audio books. They're all on here. Shall I wait 16 weeks to finish the book? I don't think so. So I'm trying to decide if I pay the three dollars, which it's like, it's three dollars. I really do not want to pay the three dollars, but I really want to finish this book and it would be perfect. Like, I know that I would finish it probably on my drive to my family's house and I don't know if I can sit on what's happening. So I'm gonna keep you posted. You probably won't hear from me for a few days. Not that you're gonna notice the difference, but it'll be a few days before I update again, just because I'm gonna be with family and I don't know. I'll probably read some, so I'll just let you guys know what I've read when I come back from my little weekend away. It has been a few days since we last talked. I'm obviously back from my little weekend trip and not long after I got home today, I went back out into the world and I went to see the new Deadpool movie, which was really good. I really enjoyed it. I love Deadpool. So I was very excited to go see that. Now I am home and making dinner. I figured I would give you a couple of my reading updates while I chop a bunch of things. <laughs> so sorry for the lack of eye contact, never been good at that anyways, but will be especially bad for the moment. So while I was gone, I did finish Phantom Limb on my way to my family's house. I coughed up the couple of bucks for the audiobook and I landed on a three and a half star rating for that one. I think that there were definitely parts of it kind of earlier on, like, you know, around the 50% mark when I updated that shocked me and kind of completely changed the trajectory of the story. But after that, I felt like it was kind of easy to see everything coming, even down to like Lucinda Berry always kind of has a little jaw dropper right at the end, but I felt like I saw it coming pretty far away. I mean, it didn't detract from my enjoyment of the story, but it was just kind of a predictable ending, I feel like. Aside from that, I enjoyed the story. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was like one of her best that I've read. I thought that the middle part honestly started to get a little bit slow and maybe that was because I felt like I had predicted where we were going pretty fast. So I was kind of just waiting for this shoe to drop that like I knew was coming. So parts of it kind of started to feel a little bit slow to me in that middle section, even though the book is only like 250-ish pages, I think. There were parts where I was like, okay, I'm ready for this to be wrapped up. So I think 3.5 feels like a good rating. Enjoyable, definitely has some shocks in there. Like I said, that 50% mark twist got me. I did not see that coming. And yeah, I'm excited. This was, I think I said this was the book club pick for Haley's book club for this month. So I'm excited to get to that discussion and see what other people think about the book and like if they also felt like they could predict where some of those twists were going. So that was Phantom Limb. And then I've also made some progress on the romantic agenda. I am, I think 60% of the way through that one now. I'm enjoying it. 
I think it's really interesting because our main girl, plus her best friend that she's trying to be a wingman for on this little trip, they're both asexual, so there's a lot of representation for that in the book, which I think is really cool, and I'm enjoying reading about that, and just the nuances of it, and how you can have a romance book centered around asexual people. I'm just, I'm enjoying the story a lot, and I think that our main character is really funny. I really enjoy being in her head. Well, we're not really in her head. I think it's in third person, but I really enjoy her character. She's really witty. I love her humor, and the guy that she's kind of like babysitting in a way that she was asked to go with to like keep occupied for her friend. I really like their dynamic together, and they've started a little bit of like a fake dating situation because they're both trying to like make the other people that they're there with jealous and trying to like end that relationship. As far as the rest of my evening goes, like I said, I'm 60% of the way through that book and I have to finish it tonight because my Libby hold expires tomorrow, which is awesome. So I'm obviously, like I said, making dinner and then I'm going to try and sit and finish that book because I will be really upset if it gets returned when I'm this far into it. I'm going to finish dinner because I'm absolutely incapable of multitasking and things are definitely burning as I try to speak to you. So I'm going to go and I will let you know when I have final thoughts about the romantic agenda. That'll probably be the last book I read in this vlog. So this will probably wrap up tomorrow. But yeah, I'll let you know what I think about it when I finish. Hello, it is the next day. It's like noon-ish now, but I am here to wrap up this vlog because I was able to finish the romantic agenda last night before I went to bed and I landed on a three-star rating for that one. I thought it was cute. I enjoyed my experience reading it. I don't think it's gonna stick with me like super long term. I don't think it's the most attached I've felt to a couple in a romance book, and there were some elements of it to me that kind of dragged out a little bit too long, like pretty much right up until the end, that I kind of wished we could have resolved a little bit sooner so that our main character could have like had the freedom to do more, I guess. But again, I still enjoyed my time with it. It was a quick, easy, like, summary read. They are vacationing at this, like, lake cabin, so it felt very atmospheric for this time of year. Overall, I enjoyed it. It's just not, like, a favorite of all time or anything, so I landed on a three-star rating for that one. With that, we are going to wrap up this mood reading vlog. I think we read like five books. I honestly have already forgotten how many books I read in this video. That is going to be the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really like making mood reading vlogs just because it gives me freedom to do whatever I want, which I love. So I'm sure you will see many more of these from me in the future, but that is all for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Bye.